Hi there. Today I want to talk about this Fender Vintera Mustang and some mods I did to it, especially putting in a five-way rotary switch. I'll also give you a couple of setup tips and show you the sounds that it's got. Enjoy! So, this is a Fender Vintera Mustang made in Mexico and very nicely made, I must say. Everything fits well together, the body is nice and lightweight, the neck profile is lovely, the paint job is excellent. Um, I like the tuners, they're gotos, they're very good. Uh, the fretwork is good. I would have preferred on the body a uh, forearm contour and a belly cut, but okay, the first Mustang didn't have that. I don't quite like the radiusing of the body. I think it's a bit crude, but it's not super important. The vibrato is good, the electronics are good, and the control panel, I think it looks a little fatter than the originals, but I mean, not super important. Now, I bought this guitar knowing that the bridge pickup was broken. So the first thing I did was ask uh, Q Pickups from Croatia for a set of hand-wound pickups. Um, it's a super nice guy and he'll guide you through the whole process. I wanted the pickups to sound like a 78 uh, Mustang and he did a perfect job on that. Um, so I put these new pickups in. Um, and then what I wanted was to add a series sound, like uh, the two pickups in series, so you get a fatter humbugging sound on top of the four classic Mustang sounds. The classic Mustang sounds are the neck pickup, then both pickups in parallel, both pickups in parallel but out of phase, and then just the bridge pickup. Normally you use the sliding switches that would sit here to select those sounds. Um, I find those switches reasonably fiddly, and I didn't manage to figure out a way how to add my series sound to the existing sounds with just those switches, uh, which is why I took them out. Um, I also took the tone pot out because I don't like tone pots in Fender style guitars. Uh, and that freed up this spot to put a rotary switch there. So you'd need a five throw, four pole rotary switch. Those are slightly too large to fit in the control cavities. So I had to route that out a little bit, but it still fits underneath the control plate. Um, I'll show you how the wiring works. This is a crude drawing of one of these five-way switches. Um, the knob is pointing away from us in the drawing. And it's built up in two levels. Um, there are four poles, A, B, C, and D, and each one has five associated connector points. The poles are always connected to the circuit. And then, based on the position of your switch, uh, the poles will be connected to whatever is connected to one, two, three, four, or five. So, how do we wire this up? Pole A is always connected to the positive lead from the neck pickup. Pole B is always connected to the negative lead from the neck pickup. Pole C is always connected to the positive lead of the bridge pickup. And pole D to the negative lead of the bridge pickup. And then you've got your five positions uh, corresponding to neck only, parallel in phase, parallel out of phase, series, and bridge only. So, for example, if you want to wire the parallel out of phase position, uh, you put the connecting point A3 needs to go to your output of your signal. Connecting point B3 goes to ground, C3 goes to ground, and D3 goes to the output line. Um, the easiest would be to use a bus. A bus basically groups connectors in an electrical circuit. So instead of wiring each point that says out to your output or to your volume pot, you have one wire that is your output, and that wire connects all of these points. Uh, yeah, that's it. Like that, I end up with five positions. First off, I've got just a neck pickup, then both pickups in parallel, both pickups in parallel out of phase, both pickups in series, and just my bridge pickup. And then volume knob, that's all I need. Yeah, then I set it up. Um, the vibrato is a bit tricky to get right. Um, so what I did was I put 12 strings on it um, because I think it needs fat strings. 11s don't feel right on it and it gets this nice punchy quality when you put 12s on it. I think 13s would be nice as well. Um, then the bridge kept on winding down. So I slid a one euro piece underneath it. This is a cheap fix. It works like a charm. 
And then on the vibrato itself, um, on the back of it, you've got springs that hold it. And you can shift the positions of these springs to make them shorter or longer and to, to vary the pull these have. I set those so that there's more pull on the bass strings and less on the treble springs, which in the end, I think gives a more equal pull over all the strings. And then I wound this cigar, as it's called, down almost completely, just so that the strings don't touch when you look uh, between the tail, uh, the tailpiece and the bridge plate. And that way, it, it is no floating vibrato anymore, but it still goes down perfectly. Um, I felt that it added sustain, it, felt it added quality in the tone that I didn't have before that, and it's much more stable now. Um, you can go crazy on this vibrato and it will just stay in tune, it's very nice. And that's it for setup tips. The last thing I did uh, was fill the holes that were left when I took out the switches here. Uh, the screw holes, I filled them with nail polish in gold and glitter, looks fab. And then behind the pick card, I put cards on which I wrote King Kong Theory in honor of the book by Virginie Despentes, which is excellent and you should certainly read. So that's what I did to make this guitar mine. Uh, maybe there's something useful in there for you as well. I'll show you the sounds I get from it. Yeah, enjoy, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.